What's up guys, it is I, once again, MrGamer990 and welcome to another part of our Let's Play series on Mass Effect. We are back in our role as Commander Shepard, who alongside Team Shepard are ready to embark on a journey in the far deep space looking for side missions to complete and before we do that we're going to have a little chit chat with our team down below in the deck i believe is what you call it the first member of team shepherd we're going to chat with is kaden alenko let's talk to him the beautiful man anything you need commander looking for a personal input just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for Wow. Tactical appraisal, yeah. What's your opinion on the last mission? I don't see how we could have done things any better. At least not without getting to Eden Prime sooner. And we were on the scene faster than any other Alliance ship could have been. Yeah, of course. Goodbye. Adios. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Amigos. Commander. Wow, so straightforward. And there should be something we can examine here. Yeah, sleeper pod. Thank you very much. To examine and collect extra experiences is very good. Dr. Chuck was. Yes, Commander. Is there something you need? Oh, yeah, there is. Personal questions. How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe, too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out wow. military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Wow. You are quite a mother figure, a very loving mother figure. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth, or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left mm. the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. Uh, Dr. Chuck was, does have her charm. She does. Kaden Alenko. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission, but he has an impressive service record, over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. Yeah, an L2. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Ooh. Sometimes there are complications. Old Tama complications? What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. Oh. Migraines. That must really suck, but goodbye. I should go. Dear goodbye, Dr. Chakwas. And now we are going below in the deck so we can talk to Garrus, Ashley, and of course my boy Rex. Or not Rex. Oh my god, how could I forget Tali Zora? The beautiful, amazing Tali Zora. Oh yeah, baby. And this elevator is quite slow. Oh, it is, but thank god it's gonna stop right now. And we can talk to our beloved team. The first of who is going to be Ms. Ashley Williams. Oh yeah. Hello, Ashley. Commander. <laughs> can we talk? Do you have a few minutes to talk one on one? I'm sorry, Commander. I oh. need to get my duty squared away. I will not okay. later, though. Oh, yeah, we will. Trust me. How are we doing? What's your opinion on the last mission? Kind of wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense. I appreciate the rescue. I just Let wish... We save your unit. You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit? Yes, sir. If I had been more alert... We wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. Oh, we've seen this dialogue before, but for those of you who haven't, uh, check it out. The gas are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. I'll make sure yeah. it doesn't happen again. We trust you, Ashley. We do. Goodbye. Dismiss, Chief. <laughs> Dismiss, Chief. Sir. That's one way of saying goodbye. Next, Erd not Rex. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What Thank can you. I do for you? Personal inquiry. What's your story, Rex? There's no story. 
Wow. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Come on. Don't be an ass. Fuck you, Shepard. Come on. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was oh, fun. That's unfortunate. Oh, I'm yeah. about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It isn't? It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? Huh? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive oh. birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? The infection that Erdnot Rex is referring to is the genophage, which you guys and girls will learn more about, but I see your point, or we see your point. I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. <laughs> we won't, trust me. Touchy subject, yeah. I was quite just touchy. making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. <laughs> As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Investigate extinction. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. <laughs> We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Yeah one place so lots of species have left their homes and prospered but they go to colonize new worlds <laughs> we're not settlers we're warriors we want to fight yeah so fight we leave, hire ourselves out <laughs> and most of us never go back mercenaries and bounty hunters which rex is a bounty hunter genophage what can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Solarians if you want details. They made it. Huh, yeah. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth. Oh. Uh, most never get that far. Prevents Every them. Every Krogan is infected. Everyone. And no one's rushing to find a cure. From spreading and, you know, mass producing. It's a very understandable tactic in war, but still very cruel nonetheless. What? Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? <laughs> Good point. You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's yeah. just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Yeah. Nobody can. That's how most cultures are nowadays. One culture may seem alien to you. On their side, however, you might seem alien to them, but that's just how it is, I see. So long, Rex. Yeah, so long, buddy. Now let's go talk with the beautiful Garrus Vicarian. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at Cisa. You knew? Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. But c -Sec, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on the back. Dude, there are still rules. It's not that bad. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Exactly. Man. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I went. My answer to Garrus Vicarian's bullshit logic is too much freedom is very bad because without rules, we're just animals. Mindless animals killing each other, killing each other for no damn reason, but that was your reason. <laughs> so you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than oh. that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. C6 handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate me. It's a tough decision. I'm I sure hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside C6. Either way, 
I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. Wow. If you have a CSEC officer who can't be objective about his mission and do things by the book, he is a liability to the force and he is a huge liability to whatever team he's assigned to, which is what Gers Vakarian is. A huge liability that depends. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. See? We get the job done right, not bad. Got it? I wasn't I'm with him all the way. I understand. Yeah. Stand in line, boy. Inspect the M35 Mako. I'm not sure if it's Mako or that's the American casual way of pronouncing it because a lot of people online, most of who are Americans when discussing Mass Effect, use the word Mako. I prefer the word Mako because I think that's how you pronounce it right in Japanese. But let's go talk with Tali Zora in this room right here. I think it's the engineering room here and we have engineer Adams, let's talk to Tali Zora first. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. Curiosity, this ship's special. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. You're into ships? Not that way, Shepard. God. I have no idea you found ship technology so interesting. <laughs> it comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight wow. from the Geth. 300 years. Okay, that's a we long time. your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. Huh. They aren't pretty, but they work. Most smart. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. Cultivation. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Quarians. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce. And we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla. And each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. Like what? What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. So basically, there has to be a balance when, you know, populating, but the Conclave? That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have yeah. an elected council from their crew to give them advice yeah. and guidance. You're democratic? That's very good stance in politics, to be a democrat, I mean, but yeah. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. 
But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Oh my god, it's funny how politics in real life can piss off anyone or trigger an emotion out of you. When it comes to politics and games, it's quite interesting and quite illuminating, especially when hearing it from the lovely Tali Zora, Geth. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Droids with light bulb heads, tell me. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming <laughs> to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. <laughs> oh my god, guys, you know, if you create an AI program that actually has human emotions and human desires and they can talk back at you, I mean, they can talk some serious trash, that is the kind of AI I want to tear apart because no one talks trash to me, oh no, no. Most definitely an AI program who has a mind of its own and with having a mind of your own comes intention, oh yeah? Isn't AI research illegal? How come the council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable Oh my matrix. god. Never, ever create AI programs or computers without knowing the consequences behind such creation, the neural network. So, the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. Like a hive mind? So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. <laughs> but when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. My mother mentioned to me that if AI programs are in fact created, I should never talk to one because it's gonna get into my head and will do exactly what AI programs do, take me apart, manipulate me, eventually destroying me and taking over my livelihood and those closest to me. It could be any one of us guys. That is why it's very important to know the consequences when creating AIs. I don't get it. Of course you don't. <laughs> I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Why exactly? I don't see what's so bad about those questions. Yeah. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, huh. and dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. 
Yeah. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. <laughs> it was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Wow. Such fools the Quarian are for creating the Geth. And what happened to them later because of their creation, the Geth, they had it coming. They defended themselves. Of course they did. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. Yeah. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Tali, don't blame the Geth. Blame yourself and blame your people and your ancestors for creating them. They defended themselves. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors tried to wipe out another species. Yeah. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the exactly. first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get so worked up. Most Quarians tend to have pretty strong opinions yeah. about the Geth. As do humans, when it comes to each other, no matter where you're from, goodbye. I should go. I should go, See like that. Know. And let's examine the field integrity monitor, okay? Engineer Adams. Hey Commander, you know that Quarian Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. <laughs> Is she bothering you? I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. She's useful. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an yeah. eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why came down here. Investigate stealth system. Fill me in on the IES stealth systems. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up, unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself, with no emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat, cook us inside our own hull. So we're invincible? There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. FTL gives us away? Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTO flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. It has personal questions. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. <laughs> My last assignment was on the Tokyo, only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. They named a ship after a capital city in Japan. Okay, Engineer Adams, good for you. Normandy? I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. She's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. Drive Core? What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FDL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. 
Good to know. Be seeing ya, sexy boy. Carry on, Adams. Aye yeah. Aye, aye. Be seeing ya. Right now, we are going on the top deck to begin our missions or our many side missions. The first of which, we're going to the uh, Prothean mining dig site so we can meet the beautiful, lovely Dr. Liart Sony, my waifu. My bae, my love, the one lady in the entire Mass Effect series who has captured my heart and the only one who I've ever romanced because I love her that much. And let's examine the galaxy map. Here we go. We're going to the Protean dig site on whichever galaxy it is. Let's zoom out. The music, guys, is absolutely amazing. We are currently in the Serpent Nebula. That's where the Citadel is. But let's zoom out and go to the Protean dig site. That's it, guys. The Ars dig site in the Artemis Tau system. Let's go there right now. And I believe it's on Nosos. How the hell do you say these names, honestly? I might actually do the side missions, some of the side missions off camera. I have no clue where Liar is, but let's go to the Sparta system or planet or whatever the hell you call it. And here we go, guys. Enjoy this beautiful cutscene. Normandy, SR1. Cool name, very cool. Light speed travel. You can examine all the planets present in whatever system you're on. In the Sparta system, you can examine planets like these and do a survey on them, which gives you experiences and elements and uh, what the hell, oh yeah, I accidentally exit from the galaxy map, but let's go back on. That's one aspect about Mass Effect 1 I don't like. We have just performed the surveys on all Commander, the planets. Commander, I'm picking up a signal from the planet's surface. It looks like an automated distress beacon. We're going to examine it right now, so let's land. Wow, that is absolutely stunning. It is. You gotta love those lightings. Oh yeah. And let's add uh, Kaden and uh, Garrus Vakarian. Why not? And accept squad, good. I don't think Dr. Liara Tassoni is on this planet, so that's why we're going to end the episode right here. I'm going to do as many of the side missions as possible. The one mission, however, which involves Dr. Liara Tassoni on the Sparta system, I'm going to save for us, which is going to be in the next episode, so look forward to that. But thank you guys and gals for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe if you wish. And until next time, peace out, take care. Adios. Amigos, au revoir, and sayonara.